Okay, so we're going to start off with somatoform disorders today. And what do we want to know about somatoform disorders? Somatoform disorders are a group of disorders that are characterized by the presentation of physical symptoms with no medical explanation. And what do you want to remember in somatoform disorders? You never want to refer these patients. And you never want to tell the patient that nothing is wrong with them, okay? A prototypical patient is going to be the 30-year-old patient who's a female from a low socioeconomic status with problems in her social or occupational activities. Let's start out with somatization disorder. Somatization disorder, what's the most important thing to know? The diagnostic criteria. Diagnostic criteria, the patients must have complained of at least four pain symptoms, two GI symptoms, one sexual and one pseudoneurological symptom with no medical explanation. Our most important thing to do is have a single identified physician as the primary caretaker, okay? We want regular, regularly scheduled visit, visits with reassurance and basically we want to increase the patient's awareness of the possibility that these symptoms are actually psychological in nature. So psychotherapy is the treatment of choice in somatization disorder, okay? Next is going to be conversion disorder. And what we have to know about conversion disorder is that it's going to typically follow an acute stressor, okay? And it's going to be one or two neurological symptoms that are going to affect either the voluntary or the sensory um, nervous system. A lot of times on the test, it's going to present as mutism, blindness, paralysis, anesthesias, or paresthesias. Um, these patients are not lying. They're not trying to lie. They really believe the symptom is true. And it's going to be associated with passive aggressive disorder, dependent disorder, antisocial uh, personality disorder, and histrionic personality disorder. Quick hit what is our antisocial personality disorder in a patient that's under 18? Conduct disorder, right? That's our counterpart to antisocial disorder in patients under 18. Now, we want to do the same thing. We want to do psychotherapy because we want to build a relationship with the patient and we want to, we want to teach the patient coping skills, okay? And we're going to do a lot, sometimes something you might see on the test called an amobarbital interview. And amobarbital is actually also known as the truth serum and actually may help patients remember and it may help patients tell the truth. Now, hypochondriasis. Hypochondriasis is not what we uh, lived through when we were studying pathology in our second me second year medical school. Um, these patients actually believe they have a specific disease, okay? Um, and what's beautiful about psychiatry is the fact that um, it becomes easy because it's very easy to put in algorithms and there's also diagnostic criteria, okay? So if you see someone on the test that looks like they have hypochondriasis, but they have a duration of le uh, less than six months, it's not gonna be hypochondriasis, okay? Same thing with somatization disorder. They have to meet this diagnostic criteria. So our duration is going to be a minimum of six months, and the patient's going to have a preoccupation with disease, and the belief is not going to be delusional, okay? And despite constant reassurance by physicians, they're going to, they're going to have a preoccupation with the fact that they think they have this specific disease. Um, what else? What do we want to do in these patients? We want to have regularly scheduled visits to the doctor, and same thing, psychotherapy, okay? And we can also use antidepressants in this patient. Pain disorder. What do I want you to know about pain disorder? Um, pain disorder is actually going to be um, pain in one or more anatomic sites that's going to cause distress to the patient. And psychological factors are actually usually going to be found, okay? And know that these symptoms are not being faked, okay? These patients are going to have a long history of surgical and medical care a lot of times. And pain is going to be the main complaint. An example that I like to use about pain disorder when I talk about this is fibromyalgia. And what do we know about fibromyalgia? It's a pain disorder with normal laboratory findings, right? And a lot of people hypothesize that depression is the cause of fibromyalgia because um, antidepressants actually work well in these patients and our drug of choice is actually TCAs for fibromyalgia. So I like to think of pain, uh, when I think of pain disorder, I'd like to think of fibromyalgia as um, an example of a pain disorder. And once again, we're going to discuss the pro probable psychological origin of the pain and we're going to provide them with psychotherapy. Next, we're going to go into body dysmorphic disorder. And the easiest way to remember this is Michael Jackson. Um, they believe that some part of their body is abnormal or defective, so they're going to visit the plastic surgeon often, often okay? This is going to be a very easy um, test question. You're going to be able to recognize this very easy, and just know that the treatment is individual psychotherapy along with SSRIs, okay? 
Um, next, let's go over factitious disorder. Factitious disorder versus malingering is commonly confused, and what you have to remember here is your motivation, okay? In factitious disorder, it's an unconscious motivation, and in malingering, it's actually a conscious motivation, and that's very important to remember on the test, okay? Just for test purposes, remember that factitious disorder is more commonly seen in men, and it's commonly seen in healthcare workers, okay? And their main objective is to assume the sick role and eventually get hospitalization. And very key to remember on the test, these patients, if the test returns negative, they tend to accuse the doctors and threaten litigation. So if you see a patient, a healthcare worker on the test, that tends to, uh, if the test return negative, they're gonna accuse the doctor and threaten litigation, I want you to think of factitious disorder, okay? Um, a common example of this is Munchausen's disease, and it's this healthcare worker with a lot of medical knowledge, and they may actually give themselves exogenous insulin because they know that insulin is going to cause hypoglycemia and, and, and keep them in the hospital, okay? And um, you got to be careful of countertransference when you're dealing with patients with factitious disorder. A lot of times, um, the children of the patient, uh, the, the children, I mean, as children, these patients suffered abuse and this abuse uh, frequently and um, required them to go to the hospital and right now like in their adult life they, they they frequently find the need to assume the sick role okay now malingering is different malingering there's some primary gain okay and that's why malingering is usually seen in men in prisons factories and actually in the military as well okay so in prisons to get out of prison in military because they may want to may want to get out of military service but the main thing is they have a conscious motivation and they have a primary gain so these patients are actually going to be more preoccupied with the rewards than the actual alleviation of the symptoms as uh, as opposed to factitious disorder where they have an unconscious motivation where they just want to be in the hospital and it's usually because of something that happened early in life and remember in factitious these patients are going to accuse doctors and threaten litigation if tests return negative. And treatment and malingering, remember, you got to avoid confrontation in these patients, okay? It's always going to be a very bad outcome, and you want to build a physician-patient rapport, uh, rapport. And if this doesn't work, you're going to put these guys in prison. And that's what's great about being a psychiatrist as well, the power. All right. Um, and basically, I think you guys should get, get all of these down. Just know the diagnostic criteria for most of these, and also know the difference between factitious and malingering and the unconscious versus the conscious motivation. Enjoy.